Hello and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week with me, Craig Barton. Now, uh, regular viewers of the Resource of the Week series will know that one of the things I've been trying to do in this academic year of Resource of the Week is make more use of resources uh, written and shared by primary colleagues, in particular those who teach Key Stage 2. Because the more I learn about primary, the more experience I have going in there, working with students, working with teachers, and crucially, the more I teach year sevens, year after year, and year eights, and so on, I'm increasingly surprised and in awe by the level of maths that they do, both in terms of the range of stuff that they've studied and encountered, but crucially, the depth of it as well, just how far into a topic they've gone. I'm also fascinated by the way they're used to learning maths, the discussions they're used to having, group work, direct instruction versus inquiry, all this kind of stuff, it blows my mind. And I'm a firm believer that if, if we know as secondary teachers like I am, far more about the mathematical journey students have been on before they reach us of that September in year seven, then we're gonna do them a better job, we're gonna do our students a better job of teaching them um, and it's gonna be better for everybody involved. So. I have made a conscious effort to be on the lookout for really high quality primary resources for two reasons really. One, so I get that better look, I'm better informed in, in terms of what my students have experienced in maths, but also selfishly, so I can nick them and use them because there's such a massive crossover, particularly between year five and year six maths compared to year seven and year eight maths, that some of these, some of the best resources out there, I need to be using in my lessons. And I'll tell you what, wait till you see this one. It's flipping brilliant. So year five maths plan, decimal place value, essential maths, and essential is the right word for this. So essentially, <laughs> essentially, it's kind of like a scheme of work, or but for a particular unit, if that makes sense, a unit plan, a medium term plan, whatever you want to call it. And it's fully resourced. And um, it consists of a load of PDF documents. Um, but the main one is this first one here that essentially has the learning sequence. So bear in mind, this is year five. So for those of you not, not involved in the UK, we're talking nine and 10 year olds here. So we have the standard stuff that you'd expect, national curriculum statements, related statements, key concepts, and so on. Um, I like this, um, shows you a great uh, kind of step through where this where this sequence is gonna start from and end that, I like that. But now we get to my favorite bit straight away. The pulling out the big guns on page two, destination questions. Now I know what I'm about to say now is stating the obvious, but sometimes the obvious needs stating, particularly for, for someone like me. Um, Whenever I interview people for the Mr. Barton Maths podcast and I ask them how they plan lessons, the amount of people, and these are some of the world's leading educators, who say that they plan with the end in mind is ridiculous. They say it all the time. And it's something I've, I've been guilty of in the past, that my planning has essentially been find a good activity and shoehorn it into a lesson and just hope for the best. But now I like to try my best anyway to plan with the end in mind. And these destination questions just make that perfect because you've got here nine questions that the idea is if you teach this well and if the students learn it, then these are the kind of questions that they should be able to answer by the end of the unit. And just having these nine questions in mind really just helps you structure your lessons, plan a sequence, think how you're gonna assess, think how the examples you're gonna give and so on. It's so, so useful. And the questions are amazing, right? Look at that. Who is correct? Explain your answer. I love that one. I like this one here, uh, labeling. Uh, positions on a number line, ordering smallest to largest, then rounding. I love this one. Kate rounded a number to the nearest hole and the answer was four. Which numbers with two decimal places could she have started with? Just already thinking about bounds and all that kind of stuff. Lovely stuff. Remember, these are nine and 10 year old students, but it gets even better because when we then get into the kind of teacher notes, which are superb by the way, because you have all worked examples, suggested prompts and questions to ask and so on. Notice here you've got these little flags and these tell you where you can use the destination questions. So after you've gone through this particular example and you want to assess it, let's fire up number three, a destination question. Let's use one and two there for that. So it's an entire guide. And I just think back to when I was in NQT, I couldn't put together anything like this. My lessons must have been absolutely terrible. Thank God there's, there's no video evidence of them or I'd be, I'd be sacked and I'd never be allowed to teach again. But look at this, they're just so well structured. They just I'll, I'll just give you a really good sense of, of 
how to, I know I keep using the word structure, but how to structure lessons, how to sequence questions, the kind of questions to ask, the kind of examples to give as well. And the jam pack full of really nice activities. So activities for exploring ideas at greater depth, this greater depth being a key thing at, at primary level. So we get some really, really nice activities here. And then we're still going, we're now up to step three. So we're read, writing and comparing and we start to bring cubes in here just nice kind of dialogue that can be used and then again signposted where we can use our destination questions and on top of that the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed these things kind of handouts um, and these refer to the other pdfs that i mentioned if i just show you a couple of these there's just some wonderful uh, games and activities here so this particular one involving um where students place their digits from rolling dice using digit cards really really nice in terms of ordering with a bit of competition thrown in and my favorite one's this decimal range which is the very uh, final activity once students have gone through this a really really challenging game here for students to really emphasize or test or consolidate their knowledge of place values are absolutely superb um, and again involving dice so I just thought that was wonderful. I mean, the dream is that you have that for every single topic, right? It's just wonderful, uh, really nicely structured, not too busy, just the key things, the key things that a teacher needs to put together a really useful sequence of lessons and crucially to assess whether students have understood something at the end of it all. So I just thought they were wonderful. In particular, I'm a bit in love with these destination questions, if I'm honest. So if you, uh, you find this useful, hop onto the resource page, leave a review, leave some thanks, particularly if you're a second Secondary school teacher, because I think that's all that's that I know. Certainly, anytime I produce a resource and a colleague from primary says that they like it, it it's really, really special to me to think that the work I'm doing goes across key fa uh, key <laughs> key stages. Um, and I can only assume it's the same, uh, vice versa. So if you're a secondary colleague and you've used this, and you found it useful, hop on and, and share because it's always nice to thank uh, people when when they share resources and other people find them useful. Anyway, I shall return with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.